Uh, shortly before midnight this morning, uh, just at Helensvale, there was a ram raid occurred at a business, at an automotive business there. The result of this, a blue Navara was stolen. Uh, this vehicle was used shortly afterwards at another uh, ram raid, if we'll call it that, at a business in Oxford. Oxford Pit. Did I say that right? Down on the Gold Coast, North Gold Coast. Um, and then subsequently between the hours of 2am and 3.30am the same vehicle was used in a number of ram raid offences in the Logan area at Meadowbrook, at uh, Mount Warren Park, at Browns Plains. A uh, number of presences targeted there, both automotive, liquor outlets and also an electrical business as well. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, shortly after 4am the vehicle was used at a ram raid offence at a business in Archerfield and subsequent to that, shortly after that, it was also used in an auto biz automotive business in Morningside. Uh, the vehicle was then returned to Logan, where between 5 a.m. and 6.30 a.m. it targeted three further automotive businesses in uh, Logan Lee and two at Slax Creek. The vehicle was then sighted at um, the Park Ridge State School doing burnouts. Uh, the groundsman there attempted to lock the vehicle in, however, it managed to force its way out. It was then sighted along Chambers Flat Road where it caused damage, the occupants caused damage to another vehicle and it was finally abandoned in uh, Browns Plains Road at Chris Mead just shortly before 28 this morning. Now we're still in the process of looking for three Caucasian males, uh, two of them described as skinny, they were all wearing hoods, uh, some, in, some reports have them wearing balaclavas as well too, but uh, the vehicle's been located. We've done our scientific examination and we're just waiting on the results of those examinations before we can take it any further. So have you done a, an actual tally of, of how many there have been overnight then? Well, overnight, those ones, there's seven just within the Logan district as well, uh, two within the Cooma district and obviously two within the metro, so uh, what's that, 11, 11 just overnight. There is a very strong indication, very strong evidence to suggest that they're also these offenders are responsible for the offences that happened earlier on in Logan early this week. A total of 16 businesses targeted there just in Logan. So at this stage, you know, our focus, our primary focus and our focus is to get onto these people, find out who they are and get them off the street. Why did they dump the vehicle? Well, the vehicle was substantially damaged, mostly along the front there, along the front end. Um, why they abandoned it, I don't know, but it was on a, along a major road. We uh, were able to get police into the vicinity there. Uh, we had a dog uh, uh, there as well too, but unfortunately because of the large amount of pedestrian traffic associated with schools in the area, we weren't able to follow that through. But uh, we've got a number of really strong leads that we're following out at the moment. Do you think they were on foot when they abandoned the vehicle? They were on foot, yes. So the witnesses said that. It would appear they're local, yeah, so we're still following up on a number of leads. The primary one, we've just got to wait for the identification for the examination of the vehicle, fingerprints, Dur DNA. During the search this morning, was the, was the area of question, was the public ever in danger? No. There's no indication that they are armed at all. They were just, um, just more, if I can put it this way, just reckless behaviour. They were just on foot, obviously trying to get away from the police. But, uh, you know, despite our best efforts, they were able to uh, elude us on this instance. Did they have yeah. iron bars out the window? or damaged a couple of cars that way. Some witnesses said that they had, uh, there was something they described in a, in a long black sock. Now, whether that could just be at the heat of the moment, but there was some damage caused to the vehicles by that. Uh, we're still trying to work that out. We're still waiting for a number of complaints to come forward. Uh, people might left their cars there, they'll return this afternoon and find damage and we'll, we'll be able to tally up there from there. Any idea how many times over the past week police have found them, um, started a pursuit but had to abandon? Look, there was no pursuit in any of these instances this morning, none whatsoever. What about the other day? Uh, the other day, no, none, no, none, none whatsoever. Um, look, at, and you know, whilst on that point, each pursuit is taken on its merit at that time. You know, the circumstances of, of following the event, uh, what they're actually up to, uh, a continual risk assessment on danger to not only the police officers but to the members and also to the occupants of the vehicle being pursued as well too. So. It's something we do take uh, do take into consideration quite heavily. But were police aware during the night that these things were happening? Uh, were they, you know, alerted to these things and called to these addresses throughout the night? It, or? it was. It was a number. It was a result of alarms being raised. But when you have a look at the, the pattern, uh, you know, Oxfordford uh, down along the Gold Coast there, then in Logan, over in Archerfield, Morningside, they were obviously very, very transient. And it, um, unfortunately, it was just we were just following their trail all around. Uh, all around the Greater Brisbane area. Is it true that you had captured the suspects 
some, one of the offenders this morning and, and that, that offender got away? Or? No, no. It's, coincidentally, there was a man located um, as a result of a, you know, an interception by police. It's totally unrelated. He's got nothing whatsoever to do with any of these offences. Um, whilst he was taken into custody, there's a range of other matters that he's been taken into custody over, but I can assure you there's no involvement whatsoever with any of these matters. Have you made an inventory of what the thief stole? It would appear at this stage there's very little, if anything, has been stolen. Uh, they simply gain entry to either gain a vehicle or use vehicles to, you know, as a, as a weapon. And, and really, in light of things, you know, but previously, the, I suppose the weapons of choice for breaking in is would either be a hammer, a set of still some pliers, or a screwdriver. Nowadays, it's it's a vehicle. You're just ramping up the ante. That's all. But in this instance, it appears there's nothing major has been so, stolen. So, do you think they're doing it for kicks? I, I can't, I can, you know, I can not only taking assume. Anything. No, I'm not taking anything that appears they're just either after high performance vehicles or vehicles of some description. And look, while I'm on that point, can I just ask and can I urge anyone who's got, you know, like the obvious pattern is automotive industries, so automotive businesses, if I can just urge the people there or the owners and even car yards as well too, look, a simple measure is just take the keys home with you at night time. Nominate someone to take the keys home. If they haven't got keys in the car, they can't move them, they can't steal them. Most cars these days, or all the modern vehicles, are fitted with immobilisers. Unless you've got the keys, they can't go anywhere. So that is a very basic and very um, cost-efficient method of ensuring that whilst they might be able to get in there, they can't take the cars or get out and um, you know, obviously go on the spree that these people have done. Do we need another perpetual task force? No, no we don't. We've been working very, very closely. We've got assistance coming from uh, the Cooma and Gold Coast districts, from State Crime Operations Command, from our Operations Support Command, and you know, part of that assistance also involves use of the police helicopter from down on the Gold Coast. We're working very closely with the Logan City Council and the Department of Corrections to just to help us. We're covering everything at the moment and we've got, uh, we've got enough resources on the ground to be able to do it. As I said, these, um, these one offenders, this group of offenders, uh, our primary target is them. Where are they? Is there any that? intelligence showing the mongrel mob is involved? Have you heard of that gang? No. Yeah, I have heard of it, but no. No, 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 no information on that at all. Surprised by the sheer number both overnight and the, the previous ones last week, with just how many they can manage to do in a day? Well, yeah, it is. It, it takes anyone by surprise. As I said, we obviously we're dealing with a, a level or a class of criminal that um, you don't see too often, and uh, we can we can stop this behaviour and get them off the street as soon as possible. We'll we'll abate it. We'll put a stop to it. And then that's I can't stress that enough. So all we want to do is get these people off the road. Do you think that? Have you identified who you think it might be or people who are used to these, this group? Look, we've got a number of leads we're following up on and there's various information coming through. We'll generate that into intelligence and we'll act on that accordingly. But uh, at this stage, I'm not really at liberty to sort of discuss what we've got. But they're not complete mystery people to you. They're not complete mysteries who you think you might be looking for. Some of them, yeah, we believe they're well known to us. So. Do you think they'll continue their crime spree? I hope not. If we can stop them, we will. But uh, they, they appear to be rather brazen in what they're doing. Uh, you know, whether they decide to give it a go again or not, I, I can't answer that. But I truly hope that we can get them before they do. Have more no, police been tasked? Sorry? Have more police been tasked to uh, um, deal with this? We have got an ongoing operation running at the moment. We intend to add on that and uh, supplement it with those officers I said from other areas. That'll start next week. You know, We are ramping up the ante here. We, we have got sufficient numbers to get out get on the streets and um, get some things done. Any police not, not just off town, no, I'm not, I, I won't disclose that at all. Is but there a chance any of the suspects of last night's ram raids were also suspects in the ram raids looked at by perpetual task force? Any ideas yet? You said, I know you... No, not yet. It, um, as I said, it appears to be that it's a, it's, a, it's a method of entry of choice these days of some people and let's not be naive about it. These people have got loose associations. They talk to each other, you know, information they'll pass on. So you think they're sort of a, part of a larger group that are sort of doing this kind of thing? Uh, there's no evidence to suggest that. As I said, you know, they talk, they swap ideas, they share, they share ideas. So um, there's, there's no indication of any coordination, any organisation, any sort of um, organisation at all, at all. It's just uh, different people trying different things. When you say you're ramping it up, was that from tonight? Will you begin extra patrols or something on the street, given that these... We have, yeah, we have started, as of the beginning of this week, in just um, increasing our patrols, uh, tasking more officers, 
swapping shifts just to be able to sort of accommodate and get out the peak times when these things happen. But you know, as of today, we're seeing them starting to do it in daylight now, or early daylight. So, you know, said that's a new. They've upped the ante. We'll we'll accommodate them accordingly. Yeah. We'll was be able also to three address people, that. Was also three people involved in um, Monday. The the, mon the Ram raid early in the week. Was it also three people? Yeah. That's what I said, there's a very good indication that these three are involved in the ones that happened earlier on this week. And have you been able to calculate what sort of damage they've caused so far this week? No, no, we haven't. And that's really, that's the sad part. That's the tragic part about the whole lot. Um, here's a person just trying to maintain a business, earn a living so he or she can put food on their table. They're subject to thousands of dollars worth of damage for little if any gain. And just the total disregard that these three have got for these people you know, that's that's the tragic side. That's the human side of all this thing. And as, I said, as soon as we can get them off the street, as early as we can get them off the street, we will. And I can give you a, an assurance now that the police within this district are absolutely committed to getting these people. Um, it's their focus. It's their aim. It's a, it's affecting this district. It's affecting the people and the businesses in this district. And that's our priority is to get these people. It's almost like the businesses they've targeted, it's really just to go on to commit other crimes, like they've been targeting businesses to steal cars, to steal sledgehammers. Is that what you said? Is this the infancy, like is this the beginnings of their plans, do you think? Look, who knows? I don't know what's going through their tiny little minds at the moment. Um, you just can't sort of judge or even try and preempt or think what they might be thinking of. Um, as I said, in some instances, they target liquor outlets. Well, that's not for any financial gain. It's just basic greed. That's all it is. You can just put it down. Is there a possibility that they might have been involved in last month's, in which case they're out on board? Like I, I don't know. You know. Again, until we know who they are <coughs> exactly and what their history is, if they've got any history at all, then, then we'll be able to sort of look at that. But as I said, the primary thing at the moment is to get them off the street. That's our target. Have you looked at those people who are out on parole? Have you, in those people who are out on parole, have you looked at, into them? Yeah. We have, yeah. We do a number of curfew checks per shift and um, that's a that's a continual shift objectives for the crews in this area. That's where we're working in close work, in close relationship with the uh, Department of Corrections. So it was just the one car stolen last night. I thought that it was two from that business. Oh, look, no, one one actually from that business. They yeah. used a couple to, to get, you know, use one car to get another car out. But there was this one, this blue missing the the that one that's... Stolen. Uh, that's the one that's stolen, it's the one that's been doing all the damage around the town. Did yeah. they leave a vehicle behind at the scene of the first one? One business they did, yes. And that was yeah. the Silver Highlights, was it? I believe so, yeah. And the, like earlier on last week, they used one car to crash through the door of another business and then just took another car. So that's what I said, if we could just get people or business owners to take the keys with them to go home. It's simple, it doesn't cost anything. 